welcome back to our stage here at NC Manchester, the brilliant, the fantastic Mr. Chris Burley! seem to remember I said to Craig, you know, uh, get in touch with, could you stand in for me, get in touch with Brian, and he'll be on. Um, but he wasn't. <laughs> so, but you had Robert last year, who was there, who's um, always, always good value, apparently. Um, <laughs> I love Bob Athoni. And you may have seen um, the publicity, the very brief publicity for Series 12. Have you seen that? I think they did a photograph uh, of four of us as Crichtons. Yeah. Well, never again. <laughs> that was hard work, I, and my respect for Bobby, you know, goes higher and higher, uh, because I tell you what, we had two days with the mask treatment, and he has about, what, 35 in the series? And um, I just couldn't take that, so, uh, so another, another piece of worship for my dear colleague. And so how are things been now? Because we are, I can't believe it's been 12 series that we've had of the show. It seems, it seems to me like it's, it was only yesterday I was first watching as a young boy. And now here we are, like, come 30th anniversary soon as well. How, when you started back then, did you ever think it would come to this now and you'd still be packing out crowds in Manchester on a Saturday afternoon? No. <laughs> I, um, I honestly thought, but you know, I thought during the making of, of episode one and, and, and the consequent uh, episodes in, in series one, I thought, well, I just don't know who's going to watch this. You know, I just don't know. I think it's really clever. You know, I knew it was clever, but I just didn't know whether there would be... It was such a different thing to do, you know. Um, and I really just did not know what, you know, what audience would build up. But of course, that was in a completely different era of television. So... You know, we were given the chance to to sort of fail, if you like, or, or have a sort of second second go at it, because you learn so much from doing a first series, which we did, um, and then when you do a second series, you kind of learn by those mistakes and iron it out, and then you see what sort of following you picked up from the first. So, had we done it, had we done a first series maybe in 2015 or something, you know, they just would have said, well, no ratings, you know, we'll just park it off at sort of four o'clock on a Sunday morning. And not, you would never be heard of again. So uh, it's good in many ways that we started in that um, in the 20th century. <laughs> and what, are you still surprised today though when you get different view, when you get, because now I imagine for you and for the rest of the cast, when you're doing events like this, you get a whole generation of families coming up because people are watching it when they were kind of like in the first episode, and now they're bringing their kids along, and then their kids might have kids, and it kind of, the whole legacy of the show just seems to continue with that. Well, exactly. We, we've had today families of, of, you know, at least two generations who are watching, and, and I think we're, we're sort of getting to the third. Yeah. So um, it's it's just a it's a great feeling when you're seeing people, you know, young teenagers who, who are watching the show and, and you know wanting to watch, binge watch it, um, which is a, a good sign that you know they're really into it, and uh, it's it's just amazing to to feel that it's a show we did, you know, 25, 30 years ago. Um, and that's something that, that is uh, Red Dwarf, it's its own world. I think once you get in there, it, it doesn't really date as much as some other, obviously there are elements of it that do, but, um, but generally, because it's in, in that sort of uh, space, you know, Red Dwarf world, it just doesn't, um, it doesn't date as, as badly as maybe some other sitcoms. Um, although, having said that, there are some lots of normal sort of, you know, um, uh, sort of earthbound sitcoms that are, um, very watchable, but not necessarily for the same reasons. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's, it's great that the longevity is working out, and great to see young, new generations coming coming into it. And as an actor, you look back there, 
certain things you would always like, like a good role, like a role is consistent. What is it like for an actor getting a role of someone like Rimmer? auditioned for, for, for Rimmer, uh, I also auditioned for Lister. Um, uh, I just, you know, I remember in the audition the um, Robin Duggan and Paul Jackson, who was there, sort of said, well, switch, switch around to, to the actor I was doing the, the audition with. They said, switch roles and, and that sort of play with it and see how you go. So, um, but for Rimmer, I mean, I don't know, even, obviously, it was, it was deemed that I was that was the one I was sort of more suitable for. Uh, so I don't know why, um, but it, it was the whole relationship between this and Rimmer reminded me of me and my brother at school. So I, I sort of took a little bit from that. That sort of always you know competition, bickering, and all that sort of stuff. So, um, but Rimmer's great. Rimmer's you know for me, um, he, he's a lot of he's got a lot of plot lines to him. Quite a complex sort of psyche, obviously. <laughs> Um, and he's uh, he's sort of a good sort of fuel for the for the lot of the comedy. So um, it's been great fun playing. He's got some great lines, has of all the characters, of course. But uh, just being involved in Red Dwarf, you know, I, I would have happily played any of those roles apart from Crichton. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's I, I couldn't have played Cat, um, and obviously my list would have been different to Craig's. Um, so. Um, but you know, just to be involved with those guys, with, with, with Craig, Robert, Dan, Doug, and Rob back in the day, and, and all the great people we've had uh, in the show, in and around the show, has been a privilege and, you know, what, what a way to, to spend your life. And we're now going to open the questions to you, Leighton. So if you've got a question you'd like to ask Leighton, just stick your hand up and I will come around to you. And we will kick off with this gentleman here in the green t-shirt in the middle. 